Good evening, my fellow Americans. It's about time American music incorporated some diversity in the quality of it. After all, it's the end of the 19th century, and we all had a hand in building this land of the free and home of the brave. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's right. In case you've been living in a cave for the last 25 years, I am Wong Chin Fu, American heathen, nemesis of Christian hypocrisy, and monkey on everyone's back who stands in my way of truth, liberty, and justice for all. You may have attended my many lectures around the country where I've been welcomed with open arms through front doors only to have to climb out through the back window because some people just can't take the truth. That's why I'm a heathen. As you may have read in the popular North American Review, which has been reprinted all over the world, including the Times of London. Well, many want me to shut up, but I won't. And I refuse to worship a God they claim created Asians, Negroes, and colored peoples to be the serfs and slaves of so-called white people, who, after all, are just another shade of brown. Am I right? Confucius said, do unto others as you would have others do unto you 500 years before Jesus. Now, huh, what do I know about Christianity? What do you know about Christianity or the American Constitution? Take a look at this great seal of the United States. See, the pyramid, the third eye, are those Christian symbols? And the motto in Latin, E Pluribus Unum, that does not mean in God we trust. It means one out of many, many creeds, races, states, countries, rich or poor. Hmm. Now, verily, verily, I say unto you, my father and I, his only begotten son, spent my teenage years in the home of Southern Baptist missionaries in China's Shantung province. That's why I speak better English than you. Well, thanks to them, I went to school in Washington, D.C. and Pennsylvania supposedly to become a missionary. Unfortunately, when I went back to China, I preached democracy instead. And for that, I, my head became so valuable to the Manchu emperor that I decided to sail back to America and become a citizen in 1874. Now, that... I could ride the transcontinental railroad in comfort from San Francisco to New York in less than a week instead of months in a carriage is all because of the Chinese laborers who built that. They sacrificed their lives to do that. They laid a record 10 miles of track in one day, beating the Irish crew on the Central Pacific Railroad. After all, who built the Great Wall of China, right? Nine out of 10 railroad workers were Chinese. They had the most dangerous jobs, blasting tracks in the mountains. Many died. They were the lowliest paid workers on the railroad. Yet, look at this. 
Where are the Chinese faces in this picture when they celebrated the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in May 10, 1869? But there's plenty of room for the Irish, Italians, East Europeans who are not even considered white. What? Because Chinamen were pigtails and pajamas and eat rats and cats? Are you crazy? I have a standing offer of $500 to anyone who can show me that we eat rats and cats. And that's why I started this newspaper. It's bilingual to teach Americans the truth about China and the Chinese, and to get Chinese to be active, of an active force in American society. Bilingual Chinese American is an oxymoron? Who said that? Huh. Have you seen the Brooklyn Bridge they're building? They say it's impossible to unite Brooklyn and Manhattan. But in a few months, it'll be as if they were never apart. The only oxymorons are the people who claim that Chinese don't belong here. Like this Irish demagogue, Dennis Carney from San Francisco. My fellow workingmen, the day and hour have come for us to end the tyranny of the capitalists and the Chinese who steal our jobs and press down our wages. Speaking on your behalf, I, Dennis Carney, have been thrown into jail twice for supposedly inciting a riot. Twice was I cleared when it was shown that I was misquoted by the capitalist press. My only crime seems to have been that I opposed the mongolization of our country and our people. We will march to City Hall, clean out the police force, burn every book that has a particle of law in it, and enact new laws for the working men. If the Central Pacific Railroad does not discharge their Chinamen, we can discuss whether to hang, shoot, or cut them to pieces. The Chinese must go! The Chinese must go! The Chinese must go! Hey! Speak proper English or go back to where where you came from, your, your paddy boat. Shut up, you chink. We shall not be deterred by the low lackguard vaporings of Asia's almond-eyed leopards named Akun, Kia, Hung Fat, Fi Fong, Hu Ha. The name is Wang Chin Fu. Are you too chicken to accept my proposal for a debate? Or can't you read English? Let's decide this on the streets, Carney McBlarney. Choose your weapons. Chinese chopsticks? Irish potatoes? Or Krupp guns? That coward took four years before he faced off with me in the offices of the New York World newspaper in 1887. Of course I won. Everyone knows that and wrote about it. But we lost in the halls of Congress because 
most Chinese in America did not apply for citizenship and vote. When you don't vote and don't wish to vote, the politician denounces you as a reptile. The moment you show up at the ballot box, you are a man and a brother. They treat you to cigars, whiskeys, and beers. Well, very few of you, Tong Yan, Hua Ren, listen to me. You just want to make money in the gold mountain and run back to China. So, where did our fellow countrymen ran, run in 1871 when they were massacred in the biggest lynching in America, in Los Angeles? Well, the murderers and people who assault us on streets every day claim that we steal their jobs, that we spread diseases, that we accept menial wages to do work that they won't even do. That we seduce white women when it was Congress that passed the Page Act of 1875 to keep out Chinese women by branding them immoral prostitutes. That's right. Hmm. Now Congress again formalizes hate speech into American law. The Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. We will not accept this. We claim a common manhood with all other nationalities. We should be recognized as Americans. The coming of Chinese laborers shall be suspended for 10 years. Character and fitness should be the requirement of all who are desirous of becoming citizens of the American Republic. We appeal for an equal chance in the race of life in this, our adopted home. Congress declares that no state or federal court shall admit Chinese to citizenship. All laws in conflict with this are hereby repealed. That is unconstitutional. Chinese exclusion is American law. May 6, 1882. Which is why I remark in my language that's plain that for ways that are dark and for tricks that are vain, the heathen Chinese is peculiar, which the same I am free to maintain. Do we look like this to you? Take a look at the Chinese around here. Do we look anything like the yellow peril? Who are the real monsters? Lawmakers who give license to racists to attack us on the streets every day. Anyone who looks vaguely Asian. Oh. America violated the Burlingame Equal Rights Treaty of 1868 with China when China did nothing wrong. Now, in 1892, Congress renews Chinese exclusion for another 10 years. And this time, the government wants us to carry photographic identification, like dog tags, as if we're morons, lepers, and prostitutes. Is it then a crime to be a Chinaman? 
Shall I be dragged from my bed at midnight because I refuse to be photographed? If such a cruel law had been adopted by Russia, India, or even China, we would not have felt so deeply. But such a measure, too cruel, too inhuman to be practiced by the most barbarous nations on earth, was so willingly adopted by the American Congress and signed by a Christian president in this land of liberty and home of the oppressed of all nations. Oh God, is it possible that thou has created one half the people to be the serfs and slaves of the other half, that they might be tortured and plundered with impunity, that the cries of agony is but music to thee? No, no. I say thrice, no, that there is no such a God in heaven. There is no such a tyrant on earth. And there is no such a cruel nation should be permitted to do such a thing in this 19th century.